Tottenham 3, Carabag 0, a game that ends 3 0 for Tottenham, which is probably quite a flattering scoreline um, to Spurs because I honestly don't know how Carabag didn't score. That was some of the worst finishing and worst penalty I've seen from them. But you know what? Fair play to Tottenham because you basically played 90 minutes with 10 men, and that is so difficult, you know, to play 90 minutes with 10 men, all the running and extra work you've got to do. And um, I have to say, even as a Man United fan, I was really annoyed that Dragerson got sent off because I wasn't going to watch this game, but I'm someone that's been following Bergville for like four years since he was linked to United. He he caught my eye. So I was like, oh, Bergville Stein, I'm going to watch this game. Like, I want to watch this Bergville game. So thank you, Dragerson. And I'm not even a Tottenham fan and I wanted to watch Bergville. But let's talk about the game. I want to talk particularly about Solanke. I think he showed exactly why Ange went for him. Because I think looking at it from the outside, Ivan Tony was the obvious name. But now I'm looking at it and I'm looking at Ange Bon. I'm looking at what he wants. And Dominic Solanke is showing why he was chosen over Ivan Tony and why he's a good fit for Ange's system. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about uh, Dejan Kuliseski as well. Before he changed the game, thought he was good. Talk about Archie Gray, he was good. Vicario was good. Van der Ven was good. Van der Ven, Vicario, Kulu and Solanke were my four standout players. I did think Gray was promising as well. But let me give you my thoughts just as a Manchester United fan on the game. And then I want to get into some individual players. But basically, playing 90 minutes with 10 men on a big pitch is hard. So while I don't think Tottenham were at their best and conceded a lot of chances, and if you can concede that many chances to Man United at the weekend, I will appreciate it because we can't hit a barn door at the moment. We've missed 17 big chances, the most in the league this season. So, you know, if Tottenham want to do that against Man United, absolutely fine. I think considering how hard they worked with 10 men to win the game 3 0 was a very, very good result for them. Clean sheet as well, uh, which was probably helped by the bad thing finishing of Carabag, but I think Van der Ven had a very good game. Vicario made some great saves. I think Gray did well. And I think at the end of the day, Carabag had the space, had opportunities, but and that, a lot of that was probably because Spurs had won this player. I think Spurs have 11 men and I think they win that game comfortably 3-4-0. Uh, you know, we're conceding way less chances. I really do. Maybe, maybe you can say it in the reverse of maybe Carabag went for it more, that Spurs had 10 men and they opened up more. And maybe that's why the game was more open and end to end. But I actually think, you know, at the end of the day, Spurs were clinical and you could just see the difference in quality on the pitch. Spurs may have had 10 men, Carabag may have had chances, but the level of play from Tottenham and how much more clinical they were, I think was just a show of the quality. You know, at the end of the day, Carabag, they're against 10 men, they're having a lot of chances, but they don't have this quality Spurs have. And I think that's what won them the game, the quality Tottenham had on the pitch showed most in the key moments. Um, Tottenham even scored from a set piece and they got a clean sheet, which is something they don't always do. So I guess that's a positive for Spurs fans. And I think there were some good moments, particularly from um, Kulu, from, of course, uh, Solanke. And I think there was a lot of positives for Tottenham. But I also think at the end of the day, it was one of those where I think it would have been better for you to rest players ahead of the Man United game. I think Solanke played, what, 83 minutes um, and he ran so much. And I think, was Richarlison fit or maybe not fit? I think I would have probably taken him off about 60th minute for Richarlison just because how much running he does. Um, and I think my one biggest question around Ange was the substitutions. When you're freeing up, why aren't you bringing Mikey Moore on? Maybe it's just me, but I'm not convinced by Werner. I, I was surprised you made the Werner move permanent, in my opinion. Well, not permanent, but you, you brought him back. I think his work rate is good, I guess, down to 10 men, the work rate. I'd have sub Mikey Moore on, on ahead of Werner. Um, I personally would have. I think, you know... For me, I'm always a big fan of giving you for chance. And I always say, you know, if a first team player isn't doing it, put the young lad on. He's going to be hungry. He's going to offer something different. I knew what we got from Anthony every week at Manchester United. I knew exactly what we got from Anthony every week at United. And I sat there saying, play Ama Diallo, play Ama Diallo, play Ama Diallo. It was Anthony, 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 Anthony. He's finally playing Ama Diallo and there is levels. Anthony can't get in the United side. And I'm not saying that's going to be the case with Mikey Moore and and Werner, but at least give not my yeah, but at least give Mikey more running. I think Garnacho got a few minutes at 17. Um, you know, Maino started for England at 18. You know, young players can do it in the big leagues. And I think Mikey Moore is, is good for Ange's system. So personally, my biggest criticism of Ange today, because there wasn't much he could do after 10 men, was I think taking Burville off, but I get why he did that. It's just that I wanted to watch Burville. Maybe he could have brought Mikey Moore on earlier. But I do think the Tottenham defence did really well, but Radu Dragerson, that was just bad from him. It, I, obviously, he doesn't mean to do it, but it reminded me of Maguire when he was having a bad week. Now, I don't think Maguire's that bad of a centre-back for Man United. I think he's actually been quite good for us for the most part. But there was a period where Maguire was really bad, and then he goes and does something like that. And that reminded me of like a Maguire moment. It's just clumsy from the defender. But 
I want to talk about Solanke because I'm five minutes into the video and I actually think he was my man of the match. He obviously got an assist and he obviously got a goal, but it was not like the goal and assist. I think for the goal as well, the way he was holding off, so for the assist, the way he was holding off was really good, <laughs> laying it to Johnson. That was showing, you know, what a physical striker brings. You know, he's got that physicality to hold people off, the striker does. But also, I think for his goal, he had that anticipation, that instinct. I think before Son even shot, he was running into the box, which shows the striker instinct and anticipation. I think that's something that Tottenham missed. Now, Solanke's never going to be Harry Kane or as clinical or making goals look as effortless as Harry Kane. Harry Kane, for me, is the best striker in the world. But what Solanke will do is he's going to provide a focal point. He's going to provide box instincts. You've got someone with natural striker positioning and scoring there. Spurs like to put a lot of cutbacks in the box. You'll probably see that more and more. Solanke will be there. I think as he gets more confident, his finishing will improve and all of that. But you can see exactly what Solanke brings in terms of, you know, providing not just someone that's going to hold off the ball. He can hold off the ball. He can you know, hold off defenders, keep the ball well in the final third, wait for people to catch up to him. He'll do the dirty work. I mean, his pressing and running was insane. I think the reason Solanke was probably brought over Ivan Tony was because of the pressing and the running that he gives Tottenham Hotspur. I thought that was absolutely insane for Solanke. I think the last two games I've watched Tottenham, he just runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. He's a pressing machine. He, you know, he's someone that does so much work off the ball. He does all the dirty work. He does the movements, does the sprint. Sometimes this movement will drag a defender out with him and it will create space for another player, which is an underrated aspect of his game. Um, but he was pressing the ball, he was providing a focal point, but again, it's his box instincts. Son shoots, he gets in the box, he's almost anticipating the goalie to save it and snap, snap, uh, snap, uh, tap it in. He's wanting to get in the box, he's hungry for goals. I think Tottenham need that because sometimes I think in that Newcastle game, had Solanke played, because I think Tottenham did dominate Newcastle, Tottenham could have won that 2-1 instead of lost that 2-1 because I felt like Solanke would have gotten the end of one of those. But I thought Solanke had a good game, I think he links up well. Holds off defenders well. I think his movement and pressing is good. But I think him having a box instinct, that anticipation is good. And obviously three goals and assists in his last two games. So that's just going to give him confidence going into the Man United game. Well, hopefully Man United get a clean sheet, but it is going to give him confidence. And I can see why Ange went for him because of the work rate, which Ivan Tony lacks. Ivan Tony has more sim similarities in terms to Kane. He can drop deep. He can get on the ball. But you know what? Slanky had a better season last year than Tony. He's a couple of years younger. He's got a better attitude, a better work rate. And I see him as a proper Ange player. I feel like this signing, I know it's expensive. And at first I was like, hmm. But then I looked at it more and I was like, yeah, this is a good signing. Because I think Tony was the first name that came to my head. I think this is going to be a good, good signing for Tottenham. But let's talk about Deki Kuliseski because in my opinion... He's becoming really important to Tottenham and he's becoming <coughs> maybe the most underrated player this year. I put Levi Colwood, the low, and, and Deki in the three players that I think are having very underrated seasons um, this season so far. And particularly with Deki, I thought what he did really impressively was his work rate. He was running for two. Uh, his pressing, his ground coverage was good because he's got the work rate, the pressing, the ground coverage. It was good when you have 10 men, but also when you have 10 men, sometimes you don't have enough on the ball. And I felt at times Tottenham were lacking a I was mid-recording and my camera just crashed, so I don't know where I was at, but I was talking about Kuliseski and I was saying that he's someone that does, it brings that intelligence on the ball. Um, and I think he's someone that retains the ball well. And I think he's a very good player. I think he's one of the most, I think he's been really good for Tottenham this season, been one of the most underrated players. And I think he's someone that gets on the ball. He can make things happen. I think he's very good on the ball, very good on line, very good at retaining the ball. And it's probably been one of the most Tottenham's key players this season. So I don't know where it's cut out. I don't know where I was at, but it literally just crashed on me. Now, this isn't just in this game in general, but this is what I've seen from Kulu in general, is he's someone that likes to get between the lines, find the space, receive the ball at any angle at a speed, turn with the ball, take a few nice touches and play the ball well. He's someone that I think uses his body well to protect the ball because he's a little bit bigger. I think his directness gave, was given Spurs threats in transition. I think he can carry the ball. I don't think he's an out and out winger that's going to hold the touchline because he's not that pace. But I felt once Kulu's been used more in those central roles, I think he has been Tottenham's player, best player this season because he likes to get between the lines. He keeps the ball well. He uses his body to hold off people well. And I think he's a good player that not only has the intelligence and creativity, but has the work rate. And I think he's had a really good season for Tottenham. He played as a centre forward in pre-season. I thought he was good. Um, I think he's been good since pre-season, particularly more centrally. Um, I'm going to talk quickly about Brennan Johnson. Obviously, he came off. 
But you know what? Three goals and three games. He's got way too much hate. He's way too overhated. I've watched Anthony and I've watched Sancho Man United's wing the last couple of years. And Brennan Johnson has done more in a Tottenham shirt than those two wingers did for United. I think he's inconsistent. And I think the best of Brennan Johnson has been off the bench. But there's a decent player in Brennan Johnson. Like he's better than Werner. You know, and I think that Kulu is better centrally. So I think that, you know, if you think of your best 11, you you could argue it's him and Odebert probably competing for the, the right wing spot. Um, because I think Kulu's better when he plays with Madison more centrally. I think the goal was important. I think what Johnson brought with that goal, because he's been getting the goals he's been getting in the right area, was you've just gone down to 10 men and Johnson scores. Now, I think that is so important that goal from Johnson because I think if he doesn't score that, the dynamic going in nil nil at half time, it could be very different for Tottenham. That goal almost gives you the confidence and let you play the game your way. I think once you went down to 10 men, it was going to be difficult for you. But once you went down to 10 men, but you went 1-0 up, it meant that, you know, uh, Karabag had to come at you. They had to, you know, really go for it. And that was going to leave space in behind for you to get them on the threat. And that was going to give you a bit more control of the game in the sense that you'd lost control because of the 10 men. Uh, but I, I think it was right to take him off. But I do worry as a United fan that he's going to cause us problems. So he plays on the right. And Man United, you know, on the on the left-hand side, our left-hand side, so your right-hand side, we're very bad at possession. Ericsson brings so much control in the ball. When a beautiful player, Christian Ericsson, uh, he's been unbelievable our last three games on the ball. But off the ball, he can't cover the ground. And then you've got Rashford on the left wing that doesn't trap that very well. And Delo is almost playing as an inverted left back because obviously we've got no left back. So Delo is playing left back, but he's playing inverted into midfield. So Man United have this left hand side that is open because Ericsson can't cover the ground. Rashford doesn't get back. But Rashford is actually being instructed to stay higher up. And then Delo is coming into midfield. So I think Brennan Johnson, now he's come off, he's going to be fresh for the United game. He's the player. Now he's informed that I am a little bit worried about how Tottenham get down that right hand side, particularly with Poro, who causes issues as well. Uh, but talking to Brennan Johnson, he's someone that's eager to make things happen. You know, touching the box per 90, he does rank first. Like, he is someone that's eager to get in the box, eager to get forward, make things happen. I think he's actually got some, one of the best assist per minute ratios in the Premier League last year as well. He was eager to put those low balls in. And I think him and Solanke could, could develop a good relationship as well. Talking of Archie Gray, I do want to round up this video. Um, fully had a good game. Nothing special. Like, he, he was decent. Like, 7 out of 10, done your job. I think... You know, there's things he needs to work on and things he needs to improve, but I think it's just how well he takes care of the ball and how good he is on the ball. Um, you know, he's. I think he is going to be a midfielder, not a fullback, but one possession, had a lot of work to do. It was very open. Um, the midfield didn't help the defence too much. So the defence did have a lot to do, <clears throat> but I think he did well. You know, seven final third entries, three duels, one, two chances, created two tackles. Very comfortable on the ball, and I can see why Ange will like him. Uh, for Suma, did well off the ball and jewels, but on the ball was clumsy. Pursuma is a player I feel so hit and miss about because there's elements of Pursuma I really like as a player, but elements of Pursuma that would frustrate me. Like he won possession back 11 times. He won six jewels. He won five fouls. He made three interceptions, but then he wasn't taking care of the ball well. And then he gives away the penalty in the second half. He's hit and miss. He's such a like a, you watch Pursuma for 10 minutes. Oh, he's having an unbelievable game. You watch him for the next 10 minutes. Oh, I think he did well considering the circumstances. I think he was clumsy gave the ball away and didn't help with elements of control. But I think considering that you had to cover 10 times more ground because of having that one less player, I think considering the circumstances and Ange probably just wanted Pursuma to win back that ball and put in the defensive shift, I, I think he's done all right. Anyway, Tottenham fans, let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching. Bye.